Hi hey guys, welcome to our daily encounter. In our reading today, we have a very famous set of passages. And they're found in Galatians chapter 5, verses 22 and 23. And this is what they say. It says, But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Against such there is no law. And uh, it might be that many of us memorize these fruits of the Spirit uh, when we were growing up in Bible class. But oftentimes, when we read these fruits of the Spirit, we read them in the wrong way, or we read these verses in the wrong way. Paul says, the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. The fruit of the Spirit is are these various dispositions. But oftentimes we read these verses as though these are the dispositions you should possess through uh, your own self-effort, through uh, really digging your heels down, really rolling up your sleeves, and really trying to accomplish these things. And as such, what we do is we take these fruits of the Spirit and we take these various dispositions and we focus on them and try really, really hard to have them. So we'll go to love and say, okay, today I'm going to be a very loving person and we focus on love and we try very hard to be a loving person. Or we go to joy and we say, okay, well, uh, uh, even though I've had a rough day, even though it's hard, uh, I'm going to try really hard today to be joyful. Or we say, you know what, I know that a fruit of the Spirit is peace. And so I'm just going to focus on peace as much as I can and and I'm going to try really, really hard to be peaceful. I'm going to do whatever it takes to try to have peace. Same with patience. And as, as you know, the more you try to have patience, the harder it is to have patience uh, because you're focusing on the things that require patience and it makes it harder to even have patience in the first place. Anyways, you go down the list and you realize as you go through the list, you may not even make it past the, the first, second, or third fruit of the Spirit. And you realize this is very exhausting. It's very difficult through our own uh, self-effort, to uh, live out these various dispositions. And so it becomes very, very difficult. We might become discouraged. And as such, we may uh, maybe put these to the side, or maybe we, we give up, uh, or we just keep trying and end up being frustrated each day, uh, knowing that we did not fulfill uh, the requirement of having all of these dispositions active throughout the day. But I would say, you know, we need to be more careful in the way that we read these verses. And especially the way that it begins. It says the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. It's the fruit of the Spirit. Um, it's not something that we, it's not a fruit of self-effort or the fruit of trying really, really hard. It's a fruit of the Spirit. The Holy Spirit has all of these different attributes, all these different dispositions. And Paul is saying here that it's through us walking according to the Spirit that this fruit will naturally be born. You know, he had just previously mentioned the deeds of the flesh. He talked about immorality, impurity, sensuality, idolatry, sorcery, enmity, strife, jealousy, outbursts of anger, disputes, dissensions, factions, envying, drunkenness, carousing. Um, these are things that the flesh just naturally produces. Uh, a person doesn't have to try very hard to do any of these things. You don't have to put out a lot of self-effort uh, to be angry or to have strife or to become jealous. It's just something that naturally arises from the flesh. And, and Paul is uh, using or comparing that of the flesh with that of the Spirit. These fruits of the Spirit are things just naturally that are produced in a life that is in line with the Holy Spirit. Uh, and, and should not have or should not require all that much effort. And so what this looks like practically is that if one has their life centered around God, centered around the Spirit. If a person is living with their lives wholly about God, if their minds are filled with the Word of God, if they're in constant worship and communion with God, if they're connected to Christ with union with Christ, through communion with Christ, through, through prayer and devotion and love, 
if one is walking in the presence of the Lord, if one has their mindset on heavenly things, on the things above, not on the things of this earth, if a person is walking according to the Spirit and not according to the flesh, these things are going to naturally come out. It's not going to be something that they have to work at or really have to try to uh, produce through self-effort. It's going to naturally come out of a person who's just living according to the Spirit, walking according to the Spirit. Uh, a tree doesn't have to work very hard to produce its fruit. At least it doesn't seem to be. It just uh, uh, The nature of the tree is to produce fruit, and it just naturally produces the fruit. If it's an apple tree, it produces apples. Uh, the same thing is true with the Christian who's walking according to the Spirit. If he's got, or he or she has got their minds in the right place, uh, as Romans chapter 8 talks about having our minds set on the Spirit, if our minds are in the right place, if our hearts are in the right place, if we're walking by faith, if we're walking in faith in the power of God in our lives, the Holy Spirit in our lives, focusing on Him and all the other things we talked about before, you know what? Love's just going to naturally come out of that type of mindset. So is uh, joy and peace and and uh, patience and kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Those, those types of things are just going to naturally come out of a life in which one's heart and one's mind is set on the Spirit and set on God and is focused on spiritual things. And so when we go to this list that Paul lists out, let's read it the right, the right way. Let's read it the way that Paul wrote it. He says the fruit of the Spirit are these things. And so what, what he's trying to do is encourage us to walk according to the Spirit and not according to the flesh. If we walk according to the flesh, naturally the fruits of the flesh are going to come out. The deeds of the flesh are going to come out. If we walk according to the Spirit, then just naturally the things of the Spirit are going to come out. And that's his point, and that's the point that we ought to uh, take home with us. So let's be encouraged to walk by the Spirit today. We know that we are living with both of these realities, uh, the, the flesh and then also the spirit, and they're at war with one another. That's also what he talked about previously. But we need to set our minds and our hearts on the spirit, to walk according to the spirit, to give ourselves over wholly to spiritual things, keeping our minds on spiritual things through prayer, through Bible reading, through worship, through connecting with God, uh, all of these things, so that then these other fruits will be naturally produced in us. And then we will be living a life that glorifies and honors God, a, a, a type of life, as Paul describes it, is one that, that needs no law because he's because one is walking according to love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, and uh, gentleness and self-control. And so let's have these fruits being born in our lives, not because necessarily we're trying to do it in the strength of the flesh, but because we're walking according to the Spirit, because we got our mind in the right place, we have our heart in the right place, we have our spirit in the right place, and uh, therefore we can have these fruits and, and glorify God and draw more people to the Lord through this type of life. So with that, guys, I do thank you for watching the video today. Hope you guys have a great day. Love you guys. God bless.